Welcome to Digital Asset News, it's top stories in cryptocurrent digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I want to talk to you about why I only dollar cost average or DCA these four tokens. So just to uh, give you a little context, DCA or dollar cost averaging, instead of putting one lump sum in, uh, what I do is I just buy uh, certain cryptocurrencies every day, or every three days or, or, or every week. And, I, and I, I put in a set amount every single time. So there's a couple of different uh, cryptos that I buy every week. Some I buy every two weeks, but these four are the only ones that I consistently put in every single day something into these portfolios. So the first one I'm going to talk to you about is Bitcoin and uh, why I put in uh, cashola or fiat into Bitcoin every single day. And it's very simple. It's because this year in 2021 is going to be uh, fireworks. I think there are so much institutional players coming in and that's what's going to level uh, the actual price action or the volatility because these institutions are not going to uh, sell too easily. They're putting in their treasury and they're gonna be around for a long time. And there's so many coming up and there's so many coming in that it's just inevitable that it will be at least six figures. Now, I don't know how far it can be. My personal prediction is 150,000. Some people have said 350, some have said 600, and some have said 1 million. I don't think it's 1 million in 2021, but I hope I'm wrong. So I'm just gonna go through the whole plethora of people who are into it, starting with Fidelity Digital Assets with 8 trillion assets under management. Uh, they've actually done mining for Bitcoin and they've got, you know, they expose their clients to it. On top of that, we've got uh, Jefferies that just came out. They are a multi-billion dollar company and they even dropped some of their gold positions, 5% of their gold bullion to get exposed into cryptocurrencies. On top of that, you have Mass Mutual with a hundred million dollar purchase. And then of course, all the different public companies such as uh, the one that everybody talks about, MicroStrategy, which they look like a genius right now because they put in over a billion and now they got 1.6 billion. Galaxy Digital, Square, Voyager Digital, Riot Blockchain. Riot Blockchain, I believe, is a mining operation and it's something to look for as far as stocks. So on top of all that, we've also got uh, some of the legends like Drucken Miller, who's been responsible for a lot of the big action plays throughout the world as far as hedge fund management. And of course, Paul Tudor Jones, where he said as of May, he's going to put 2% of total investments into Bitcoin futures. I personally believe it's a lot more and he's doing a lot of things behind the scenes. And he's one of those legends where people say, well, hold on, Paul Tudor Jones does it. I can do it. And then, of course, the biggest one, uh, PayPal. When PayPal came in, this is a huge game changer, and they put in the four horsemen, which was essentially Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. And those are going to be the winners. I believe PayPal will be the next Coinbase effect. Whenever they add another cryptocurrency, watch that cryptocurrency digital asset go to the moon. So this is why I'm investing into Bitcoin every single day. I have a stopping point of around 30,000. I talk about dollar cost averaging until that point and why I picked that point. It all has to do with fractals and history and things like that. I will link at the end of this video, but that is why I am so heavy into Bitcoin. Next up, and this is no surprise if you follow the channel, Ethereum. Ethereum to me, a lot of people miss the point uh, of what it is. And when I take a look at what's going on in the traditional markets, like there's a little article from NASDAQ and talks about why Ethereum and Bitcoin are very different investments and they don't really get to the crux of it. They don't really talk about it. They really just talk about price action and why you can get into it and what it's going to be as far as a currency. And that's the problem is because people look at all these, they, they think cryptocurrency is just currency. But that's not the, the whole story. Uh, Ethereum to me is not a currency. It, it doesn't really do too much as, I mean, it can be uh, in, in some respect, but in reality, what it is, is you use Ethereum to build everything on top of it. It is like a protocol. It is like HTTPS or, P, or TCP IP. You are building the whole new internet on it. You're building dApps. You're, you're building decentralized social media applications. You're building decentralized websites so nobody can really shut it down. That is what you are doing with Ethereum. On top of that, everything is built on Ethereum. And this is just a small list uh, of all the different tokens that have been built on Ethereum. And I'd have to go a lot faster because there's so many that are built on Ethereum. So as you can see, there's a lot of things going on uh, as far as the ERC-20 token and Ethereum. And that is why I'm investing so heavily into Ether. So people will talk about decentralized finance and how great it is. And they're picking all these different projects. And they're like, which one should I pick? And I'm like, 
don't pick any of them. I mean, if you're really into it, you can go ahead ahead. But if you just want to be safe, just pick Ethereum because everything's built on that as far as DeFi and just make things a, a heck of a lot simpler. And that is a big deal. So that is why I dollar cost average every single day, Bitcoin and Ethereum. The third one is Cardano. And Cardano is just because I believe it is it is a, a direct competitor to Ethereum as far as smart contracts and dApps and everything else that goes along with it. So I don't know which one is going to be the king of all kings. It could be Ethereum, it could be Cardano. One is going to be awesome and one is gonna be spectacular. I just don't know which one it is, so I invest into both. To me, I kind of look at it as like, the rivalry between Apple and Microsoft back in the 80s and 90s. I think it's one's just jockeying for position and we don't know which one it's gonna be. At one point it could be Ethereum, at one point it could be Cardano in the future and vice versa, I just don't know. That's why I dollar cost average every single day into Cardano. And the thing about Cardano, uh, if you don't know, we have our own staking pool here at DNews. If you go to danteachescrypto.com, Cardano staking pool, I will, I, it's always in the description of every one of my videos, it looks just like this. And when you go there, you just click on wallets and you can watch a nice little video about how to stake to DNews. But what we're talking about here today is all about Cardano and why I dollar cost average every single day into it. First of all, like Charles Hoskins talks about, it is a third generation blockchain. They are also into decentralized applications or dApps platform. It's with a multi-asset ledger and verifiable smart contracts, which they just got into with the Gogan era. But Cardano takes it a step further and they're actually more of a Fortune 500 company. That's the best way I can kind of put it because not only are they doing everything with decentralization and cryptocurrencies and as a digital asset, but they've broken it down into three different levels, Cardano.org, IOHK, and Emergo. And when I take a look at just looking at the Cardano Foundation and we take a look at their actual team, uh, these are all the, the, the chair people and the councils, but the operations, this guy right here, Frederick Gregard, he is or was a, price, a part of Price Waterhouse Cooper. He was a high level executive. Now he's a CEO of Cardano Foundation. And he comes from a background of the Fortune 500 companies. And a lot of these people also do. And it's when I take a look, because I'm a small business owner myself, I've owned a couple of businesses, well, I still do. And I take a look at what they've done as far as building the teams together. A team will make or break you as far as what you do, as far as moving into the future. And when I take a look at this, I'm like, this is a lot of top level people. If you go look in their, their LinkedIn accounts, which I've done, you can see that these people are top notch. And that is just the actual foundation side. Now we take a look at IOHK, which is where they kind of build everything with it. Now we take a look at the team. Of course, you got Charles and Charles Eisen, the CEO, and Jeremy Wood, the founder. Now we're taking a look at an even deeper level. And when we want to build things and get things into the next level and actually bring on these huge companies which have such a, a legacy feature, you're going to need a lot of people who know how to talk to those individuals and bring them to the next level because we can't just leave everybody behind. So when people talk about, ah, eh, there's not really much going on and so on, and they don't have a lot of developers and all this development's going on, I'm like, what are you talking about? And these are all people that are kind of making this, this operation just work and work and work. And there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes and it's one of those things of why I believe in Cardano. And lastly, I want to talk about Emergo. Emergo, what it really is, it says right here, it's a global blockchain technology company providing solutions for developers, startups, enterprises, and governments. Emergo develops enterprise-grade applications, developer tools, invests in startups, and provides blockchain education. And again, another team. I mean, it's not a huge team like the other ones before, but again, they have put together what a team is supposed to do as far as a multi-facet group that can do a lot of different things and move it in the right direction. And this is why I'm so bullish on Cardano and who knows which one's going to win, but I can tell you this, I will put my money in both and I will dollar cost average every single day into these two projects plus Bitcoin. Now, the last one may be a little bit of a shocker, but it's Voyager. And the reason why I like Voyager is because, first of all, they're not an exchange. They are a brokerage. They use a lot of different exchanges to get the best price. I mean, that's good for us, but what does that mean for like the business moving forward? Well, Voyager is based in the United States, but just recently they purchased LGO Markets, which is a French crypto exchange focusing on corporate investors. And what they are doing is they bought that so they can get into the institutional market in Europe and also give this to retail investors in Europe. On top of that, they're also going to be moving into Canada. 
uh, in the next couple of months. So these are the big plays that they are making. On top of that, they have merged the LGO token from the LGO exchange plus the Voyager token, and they're going to offer a not just a loyalty program, but it's going to be able to be staked. It's going to be help you with uh, fee savings, interest booster. They're going to give you a debit card. And of course, if, depending on where you're at, it's going to be either free or just a little bit of uh, per month. Cashback rewards, level up rewards, and you're going to be able to stake it for up to 7% APR. When we think about the different exchange coins, Binance coin always, always comes to mind. Why did that go from next to nothing all the way up to, geez, it's $32. So, I mean, if you take a look at what could potentially happen with Voyager, I think this is just an underrated darling on top of the fact that you have to understand that you can get exposure, not just the crypto side, but to the publicly traded company side because Voyager is a publicly traded company that has done remarkably well this year. If you take a look at the stock itself, here's where they at were January 20th, January 8th, excuse me, 2020. You're looking at 20 cents, not too much really going on. Then they made a lot of different moves, a little merger, a little acquisition, doing things with cryptocurrency, doing pretty well, 70 cents, 69 cents, 50 cents. Oh, and here we go, 91, 94, dollar, dollar 38, 230. And now we're stuck we're around $3.33. That is an amazing run for the traditional market. Now think about what they could potentially do with their business, with their token, and everything else in between about what's going on. And to reiterate my point, Let's get the CEO, and I'm going to have him explain it to you about what's going on. Plus, you're going to be able to win $100 worth of the Voyager token. So let's jump into the office. All right, everybody, welcome back to the office. So uh, today, we're giving away $100 worth of VGX or Voyager token, which I uh, brought on Steve to tell us uh, all about it. I want to say, first of all, Steve, thanks for donating to the uh, 12 Days of Christmas. I really appreciate it. But there's, there's three things I want to talk about, plus a bonus. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, all the different cryptocurrencies and digital assets that we're able to actually take off of uh, Voyager. Uh, the second thing is about the mergers and acquisitions of what happened with LGO for institutional uh, investment over there in Europe. I think you guys are going to be going over there. And then uh, the rewards program, that's it. So the rewards program, I know there's, there's some things that are going to be tweaked here and there. And then we're going to finish off with just a little XRP question. So let's take it from the top. Tell me about uh, what's going on with all the different cryptos that are being able to be taken off of the exchange. I think uh, as an agency broker, we last time I think I was on your, your, your program, I mentioned that we're constantly adding more that can be taken off the platform. Uh, it's important for us. We, we believe you know customers have access to every coin they buy immediately anyway. It's in their wallet that we hold for them. But at the end of the day, we want them to be able to take it anywhere they want. Uh, there's a huge you know, amount of customers that we have that say, please hold it for me because I don't know what I'm doing in my own wallet. But then there's a tremendous amount of customers that say, I want access to it and do it myself, take it off. I want to go stake it somewhere. I want to do my own lending program. I want, and so you know, we're, we are building out our team. We raised uh, another $8 million Canadian recently. And so we're building out our team more to expedite the crypto transfer process so we can keep adding more and more uh, and try to get to parity so that the fact that if we offer it for trading, we'll get to the point where you can offer, we can offer it to take off the platform. But our first goal was always to bring access to consumers to be able to participate. And then the second, you know, on top of that is then the crypto transfer. So we're excited by it. I know we launched a few recently and more to come. Yeah. So I will just say this. Uh, when, you had, when you came on the program last time, I think about a month ago or so, that was the big question for everybody. And uh, you, you stood here and you said... We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And of course, I, I'm like, yeah, I believe Steve. Steve's a good guy. I, I know where he's going. He's kind of like me. And of course, I'd say about, about half of the people were like, he's not going to do anything. He's full of it. And the XRP airdrop and the flare. And guess what? You did do it. So one of those things I want to say thanks for was the Cardano that you transferred over because we just started a stake pool for Cardano. So it was a very important. I was able to take it off of Voyager and put it into my Daedalus wallet. That was one thing. And the other big thing was, of course, uh, the Spark airdrop with you being able to like uh, accommodate that and then moving things in and out. Uh, thank you so much for doing those things. So looks like we're on the right path. Let's see if 2021 is going to be the big breakout year. I said to you a month ago, and I reiterated just a few minutes ago, is that that's our goal. Our goal is to get everything to parity. It just takes time. Uh, you know, we're building every single day. And so we're excited about adding more in 21. Yeah, there is one thing that people are pretty ticked off about. 
And that is that uh, they cannot get Voyager outside the U.S. Another thing that they're ticked off about is, of course, New York. But let's talk about real quick about what's happening with the mergers and acquisitions for LGO, which is uh, that is for institutional investing over in, I believe it's France. Tell us about what's going more on, than that. how that's working. Great. Yeah, it's actually more than that. It's uh, we we picked up LGO. We did a nice acquisition there. Uh, M&A is in my DNA. Uh, <laughs> did it for years in my old business. I did eight acquisitions in seven years and built out my old business that way. Uh, organically and M and A, and in this case, we we're able to f- get a PSAN registered, an AMF registered entity in France that allows us to offer institutional, uh, but also open up the platform for retail consumers throughout Europe. Uh, and so we're working towards that. Uh, we closed that deal a few weeks ago, and we expect to be in Europe sometime by July-ish or so, uh, and offer the whole product to you know Europeans. Uh, and so I think it's just a process. You know, we had to get KYC providers in place, which we did. Uh, we're working through payment processing and money movements and then changing the app a little bit. So all those things have to, the UI UX has to change. So everything's happening in, in tandem as we move towards that by around July. Uh, and that'll come after we launch in Canada. And again, working with the Ontario Securities Commission in Canada to launch our business in Canada. We've already started that institutional side, opening up a corporate desk and OTC desk, but Canada by around March and then Europe by uh, July. That's huge. So that so before we move on, <clears throat> let me ask you about this. So you're gonna be in Canada in a very short amount of time. Europe, maybe we're looking at July. Tell us about New York. How are we doing it as far as getting there into New York? We're working hard towards that one. It's, uh, you know, as most people know, New York has the bit license. Uh, most parties take two years plus to do it. Uh, they only gave one, I think, one license out all of 2020 That's and right. one conditional license to PayPal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so there's not a lot of activity of new licenses, but we're, we're, we believe we're close. Uh, we're working. We got some deadlines coming up to file some more documents. We're excited about it. Uh, our compliance team, group of people working on this stuff, like round the clock. Um, we hope to get there. You know, we hope to get there in, in soon. So the reason the, the reason why I brought it up was just to show people how extremely difficult it is to do these types of things. You can do things globally, but as far as like getting into New York, it's like an act of God. That's what it seems like. So I just wanted to, to reiterate that point that that is how hard it is to get into New York. And then um, when we talk about LGO. I know there's going to be a merger of the LGO and BGX token, right? Yes, that'll take place. Uh, we're going through a security audit in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's mandatory to do that uh, to make sure it's listed uh, on the exchanges. Uh, we're working with multiple exchanges to expand where the token is traded as well. Uh, although Binance is probably the, the largest one right now, and we have a great relationship with them and working with them on this. And I still think no matter what, Binance is the core place to... to uh, for the token to be traded, uh, but we are working with others to get some su- supplemental. Uh, so we're hopeful by February, you know, after the security audit, which is intense to be that, to get that token swap done. Well, as, as we all need a little more security, I think we saw that with the, with the recent ledger hack. So take as much time as you need, Steve. We're okay with that. <laughs> I think people will, uh, I think people will be more, you know, accessible and understanding about the security now after they see what's going on with Ledger. Because I've seen some of your tweets where people are, are you know, sending you stuff like I'm coming to your house or something like that. It's like, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, God bless. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an insane time, but uh, hope it all works out. But it's going to take a little bit of uh, effort on working the Ledger part. But that's a whole nother, another topic. But there was one thing about the VGX token. And this was actually from a report uh, from Bitcoin.com. And they talked about, uh, according to reports, now we're talking about the VGX token, as it merges, will feature decentralized finance, DeFi functions, such as community governance and staking at an at a initial rate of 7%. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, the initial rate that we're going to set is 7%. Uh, the community, I think it's after one year, will get to decide if they want to make it 10%, 2%, 3%. It's up to them. Uh, we put the power back into the community on that. Uh, the utility that we've brought to market that we've showed already uh, has mixed reaction. So that's not a perfect solution for us. Uh, and I say that a little grain of salt. Uh, 
but we're working on it and it's one of my holiday projects here is to to really work on expanding that and improving that for bgx holders uh we get it we understand it uh i you know i've always said to you the business doesn't happen without customers and so we're listening to the customers we're listening to the holders and it's just going to take time to rework it you got to run a lot of numbers look a lot of scenarios uh and make sure you stay above you know above the 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 uh, the press and above the regulatory environment and stay in compliance with that. So we're doing all those things. So it will take us a couple of weeks to work through it, but it's one of my holiday projects. Sounds good. Yeah, I know. I took a look at the at the loyalty program and I was kind of, I was pretty impressed because, you know, we're talking about cashback rewards as far as BIPs, a debit card fee, and then being waived, referral programs, withdrawal fees, uh, uh, interest bolsters, you know, uh, between 0.5 and 1.5. And then it's like, it's like a three-tier system, Explore, Navigator, Voyager. So I think those types of things, I, I understand that people are like, hey, we don't like this. Could you put this in? So I'm excited to see what it's actually going to be. Because right now, what I see, I go for it right now. Initial feedback has been great. And there's still a good majority of people that really like it. But I think there are some things we could tweak. I think around the interest sides and so forth, I think there's things we can, we can tweak to make it even more powerful for the VGX holder. And that's what we're trying to do is drive a community of loyal customers that want to use the product and want to hold the token. So just trying to balance all that. It's it, everyone thinks it's easy, just go copy this or go copy <laughs> someone else's. But everybody's regulatory framework is different. And so we've got to work within a US regulatory framework to make sure that we're delivering a, a true utility on the platform uh, with rewards. And I tend to call it very much like a like an airline miles program, but I want it to be deeper and more embedded into our ecosystem. Yeah. Don't copy everybody else. Cause I hear all the different complaints about every <laughs> single thing that's out there. I know exactly what they're saying. So, so Steve, uh, anything else for us before we get into our final question? Again, I just want to wish everybody, you know, happy holidays. I'm always happy to come on with you guys and, and speak to you. And, uh, we always have great dialogue. There's always a lot to talk about in this industry. The, uh, <laughs> This week has been been an, an eventful one, to, to say the least. But at least we get to end the week uh, with a holiday, and then we're walking into New Year. So, you know, maybe everything will, will be even brighter in 21, which we think. Yeah, and we even got a new SEC chairman coming in today, right. which is appointed. So I think 2021 is going to be our year. Getting on the SEC topic, what do you think about XRP? What's oh, happening? Man. What's going on? Man, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. Uh, but I think, look, I think every having been involved in the financial services 25 years and seen everything in my time at E-Trade, um, I think that there's two sides to every story. You see the written side from the SEC. I think it's in both their best interest. Uh, there's a lot to lose. I don't know if there's a lot to gain on either side here, uh, but I think there's a lot to lose. So I, I'm hopeful that both, both sides can get around the table and talk through the differences and what the SEC thinks and what Ripple thinks and, and really come to a resolution because this industry is too big. There's a lot of upside in the industry. There's a lot of great things that can come of this industry. Uh, we saw what happened. You know, There's a little negative effect to a lot, of the, a lot of the tokens over the last 48 hours, although they're all starting to rebound. Yeah. But I just think there's a lot to, there's a lot to, to, to help the industry move forward rather than try to tear it down and, and I think they'll somehow or another, they'll start working on that. Um, mm -hmm. But boy, it was 75 pages of a lot of reading to do. Yeah. And then be before we came on, you had said that you don't believe that anybody's really trying to game the system because we don't even know what the system is. The, the rules that we are want to have in place, they won't give us the rules. So it's like, how can we play the game? So I think later on, hopefully with this, with the new commissioner, uh, new chairman, we'll see what happens. But it's a dicey situation. That's all I can say. I did say that to you is that I think we, we welcome regulation. I think there's, we want it. All of us in, in, in the industry want some regulation. I know there's a whole segment of people that, that pretty much says like, no, regulation's bad. You know, this is supposed to be unregulated, but it's not. We need, there needs to be rules around customer protection to really safeguard customer assets. And that's where I think the regulation should go and, and will go. And we're happy to participate. You know, we're working with some people and some of the associations to do that. And, you know, that will come and not sure when it comes, but I do believe that it's an important part of taking a, a, a Bitcoin, which is give or take one twentieth the size of a market cap of gold, get it to 
parity with gold is going to take regulation because we need some more, you know, some more rules so we can customers can feel, feel safe. Yeah. Regulations like cake, a slice of cake's okay, but a, a whole, a whole, uh, a cake itself will ruin your entire night. All right. So anyhow, Steve, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. If you'd like to win that hundred dollar VGX token, all you got to do is just two things. Just type in Voyager in the uh, chat and, or in the, uh, any kind of comment and also put in your Voyager, um, wallet account your public address not your private address and we'll have somebody from voyager draw the winner tomorrow and i will announce it tomorrow so two things type in voyager also your wallet and that is it steve thanks so much for coming by we appreciate it especially all the information merry christmas and thanks again for having me and to follow up with what steve said and he actually said this to me uh, after we got done and he was talking about customer service and it's the it's the reason why I believe that Voyager is going to be very successful. And he said, he goes, you know, I've gotten DMs and uh, different things through, through Twitter, but recently uh, people sent him a lot of messages about this loyalty program. And he said, you know, usually I get like two or three. And it's kind of crazy because he's the CEO and he's on Twitter and he's answering questions. People have problems. He's like, let me fix that. It's just crazy. Uh, try, let's see if Brian Armstrong ever does that, which he will never will do. But uh, he said, you know what, we got so many, I, I got so many DMs about this, this loyalty program. I just told my team, I'm like, hey, we're going to go back and re rework this whole thing. And he told me, he goes, but that's the only way that I know that this will be successful if I'm in the middle of everything and I can actually put myself out there and listen to the customers and give them exactly what they want. And I thought to myself, that's exactly what I do. And that's why I think Voyager is going to be huge. Anyhow, so that's it for today. I know it was a little bit long, but a lot of, I think this is, these are the things that uh, I think people should know of why I do this. And maybe this could be something that you could look into. All right. So don't forget to uh, win that uh, Voyager, $100 worth with a Voyager token. Just type in Voyager in the comments and also leave your Voyager wallet address. And that's it. So if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure. You gotta let uh, YouTube do their magic. And uh, that is all. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Merry Christmas. And I'll see you on the next one.